Hi and welcome to Cheeky Richo's Meat Pie. We will be making the meat pie today and serving it in a few different ways. The ingredients will be in the recipe box below. Now let's get started. First thing we are going to do is put our potatoes into a pot with some salted water and boil them ready to mash them to pop on top of our little pies. To our wok on a low heat we are going to add our ham fat. We are using such lean mince that we're going to need some sort of lubrication in the pan. There's a lot of flavour in the ham fat so we're going to render some of that fat out, leave it there, once it turns a bit crispy it's going to be just part of the dish and it will be fine. So that will stop things from sticking and impart a lovely flavour. So just get that sweating off. Okay our ham fat has actually gone a bit crispy and rendered most of its fat so now we are going to send in our meat. Stir that all around. Very, very lean meat, so we needed to have something there to stop it from sticking and getting too dry. So we can up the heat a bit more so it just doesn't stew. Best to break it up now before it starts to cook too much because if you don't, it'll be in little clumps and be difficult to do once it's already started to cook. Just while that meat's browning, I will show you what I've got here. This is a container of stock, homemade stock. What it is, it's the juices left over from a roast that I've made. So I put it in the fridge in a tall container, which makes it much easier to remove the disc of fat from the top, which is going to be discarded. So if we just remove that fat, and what you have is a very gelatinous, fully flavored stock which has had most of the fat removed. So just discard that fat. We don't need that now. And this is the stock that you have left. I can get it out to show you. That would normally be wasted. It's absolutely full of flavor and it's going to be a delicious base for our meat pies. Now while our meat is cooking, we're going to add our finely diced carrot. It's raw carrot and we need to get it to start cooking and our celery which has also been finely sliced, our finely chopped garlic, three small cloves of garlic there and our cracked pepper. We want to release all the flavours from the pepper into our mix. So just keep that going there. Right, our carrot and celery are starting to soften. We're going to add our chopped ham and our chopped onion. Move that all around. And then we're going to put the lid on it just to let those flavours amalgamate and soften those vegetables slightly before we continue with our sauce. Now after a few minutes we are going to carefully remove our cover with our meat to stir. It's coming on beautifully. And our chopped tomatoes and our homemade stock. Rinse that stock out of that bowl, don't waste that either. Now we're just going to pop the lid back on there and let those vegetables continue to cook, the tomatoes to sweat down and the meat to take on the flavour of that stock. Now we've got some pre-prepared gravy mix and we're going to mix it with a little water to thicken our sauce. So just mix it around until you've squashed out all of the lumps and then we will start to thicken our pie filling. Now on a lower heat we are going to add some of our gravy mix and give it a good stir. We will be adding more water to this because we want to have gravy without meat and vegetables, not just like a savoury mince. So let's taken that up well, a little bit more, and the rest. And we're just going to rinse out the bowl that we had our gravy mix in and that should be the right consistency. Now whilst this is a savoury meat pie, Mixture, you could have this on toast for breakfast if you had some left over. 
You could have it stuffed in a potato or a crepe. It's really quite a versatile mix. A bit of colour, a bit of texture, lots of flavour, quite a few vegetables for you veggie smugglers out there. Right, off with the heat and put it to one side to cool slightly. Now our potatoes are cooked, we're going to drain them well and mash them. To mash them we're going to use a potato masher. We're going to put in one whole egg which will hold it together and give it a nice colour and flavour and some homemade buttermilk which is residual from our butter that we made which appears in a different video. Now we're just going to mash these up until it's smooth and creamy. There we go, that didn't take long and that will have a lovely flavour. That's the consistency you're after. Put that to one side too. Now we're going to divide each sheet of pastry into six. So straight down the middle and then into thirds. Do this with both sheets of pastry and you will have enough tart cases for 12 pies. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Get your tart case, give it a light spray of oil, and get one of these little squares and just tuck it in to the muffin pan. Okay, you're going to have to sort of trick it around. Don't worry about the edges that are hanging over, they don't matter. So just do that with all of them and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Okay, our little pie cases or muffin pans have been thoroughly pressed into. Now what I want you to do is get another muffin pan. Spray the bottom of the muffin pan. Instead of blind baking this with a whole pile of little weights, we are going to sit a muffin pan inside that muffin pan and blind bake it like that. So it's well greased upside down onto the other muffin pan it will slide in well and that's what you have into a moderate oven we go for about 10 to 15 minutes okay after 15 minutes we're taking our tray out of the oven lift the top tray off one stuck on it just flick it off there we go oh fell in the right hole Now for our little meat pies, I want you to get one sheet of phyllo pastry, just one. Put the rest away. We have to work very quickly here. What we're going to do is roll our pastry up into a tight, not tight, but a, a roll anyway. And then we're going to cut into little ribbons. The sharp knife. and shake them all up, separate them all, like pastry streamers. Right, now that we've done that, let's put them to one side for the moment. Get our meat pie cases, and we're going to fill them up. You don't want to fill them too full because you don't want them overflowing, and they're also getting a little topping of mashed potato as well. Try and have it go somewhere near the cases if you can. And do that with all of them. It'll look, look pretty even, do you think? Okay. Now I've got this funky little thing called a Decamax pen that you, a silicon, and you fill it up with mashed potato, clip it on, shake it down, and then squeeze. Very easy to wash up, very easy to use. Let's fill it up some more. It holds a lot actually. Let's fill it up. Line the little lugs up and put the lid on it. Shake it down. A little swirl around on the top with your mashed potato. Now 
now we get our ribbons. Oh, that's a bit shy on that one. Give a bit more attention. Okay, now we get our ribbons of pastry and give them a, a spray with our olive oil. Pick them up and throw them around a bit. them up and throw them up around a bit with our spray of olive oil. Then we put a little sprinkle of these on each pie. Pop them back into the oven to toast. They'll be crispy and pretty and different. Great finger food. Great for your Australia Day party. Okay, now we just want to brown these now because the potato, the filling and the pastry is actually cooked. Okay, it looks pretty even or so. Now, another quick spray. You can sprinkle with sesame seeds if you wanted to, it's not necessary. And back into the oven for 5 or 10 minutes. Moderate oven, 180 degrees until they're browned on top. Okay, there you have it. Cheeky Richo's mini shepherd's pies with a twist. I hope you enjoyed this little cooking demonstration. If you'd like to see more interesting recipes and ideas please check out the Cheeky Richo channel and please subscribe, leave a comment, recipe suggestion or just share an idea. Do come back and visit us again soon. We have so much more to show you and thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day. Typical Australia Day food. You've got a crownie, German gris, a dog's eye or a meat pie, dead horse or tomato sauce. It's rhyming slang. Enjoy. <laughs>